My name is Thomas Hoschler. I'm the managing director of Campus Genius. And you heard a lot about 5G already today. And there's always the question, what does Germany bring to the 5G table, um, especially what new innovative components? Um, and behind every startup, there's a story. And we got really interested in industrial automation on wireless connectivity um, due to an experience we had at a production site. So we visited, we were researchers at the university and visited various automotive production sites. And one thing that really puzzled us always was they asked us to either leave our smartphones at the, into, at the reception when we enter or switch to flight mode. And we asked them, why do we have to do that? It's not that well for us. And we came to the realization that the wireless communication technology they use in their production site on the shop floor is, does not meet the requirements. And once we enter with our smartphone and there's a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection enabled, it causes wireless errors in the connection. It will put halt the production and lead to a lot of loss and frustration for the team that's working there. Um, being researchers, we looked at the various possible technologies and we found none of them actually met the requirements. And we had a lot about 5G today, but the most important part why 5G is so important for industrial automation is spectrum. Sandum gave the very important topic this morning. Your own frequency spectrum makes it much more reliable than using wireless communication in an open frequency the spectrum like you would do in Wi-Fi mobility so you can uh, ignore everything that is wired and you also have the option of going to a public um, network and have a slice for a private 5G network usually the providers are not really flexible and you have to prove the use case and the business case to them and that's tricky um, with a private 5G network there come various positive advantages uh, to the shop floor. The reliability is much enhanced. You have device quality of service. The topic of network slicing was already mentioned. Um, besides the positive performance and speed and uh, throughput, latency. And what's really interesting is that 5G is an ICT technology. So the integration into the IT part of a company, of a shop floor, of a cloud, also edge cloud computing, can be much better solved than with Wi-Fi. And here we have been researchers, and we started a project with all the big car manufacturers and built private 5G networks to learn, learn on the technology, to learn how do we configure the radio, how to integrate actually a 5G core. That was something that we realized will be important for us later on. And out of this experience, we founded Campus Genius, um, with actually the aim to provide 5G private networks to the industry. And when we started, we had a very large customer journey from the various steps, from doing the consultancy, having the setup, getting the hardware to the actual running of the system, and then later expand and build an ecosystem of all the application providers. What we realized is that our perspective from a researcher's team was more we are more software focused. So what we built is we implemented our own 5G core. Now we'll get to that later. Um, that's more in the second part, in the one part. So we have a software that controls the 5G network. And the really interesting thing is you can scale the network even more. Um, for example, what you see on the left side is a 5G starter case. It's similar to what Nexo showed, is a all-in-one smart cell and that builds the complete RAN and once on our core, that one's behind it, and it's just to get used as an industry to 5G and try to gain first experience on how the technology works. So our main focus is the 5G core. And the 5G core, for those who don't know it, is the connection between the hardware, the radio, and the software, all the applications that run in the network. And every 5G network needs a 5G core. So the really interesting thing is, what can you do once you have a 5G core? Well, you are interoperable with various RAN vendors. So we have tested with, for example, Nokia, but also with ORAN vendors like Airspan. 
and we can fully scale with the customer. So you start with a very small network, and you can scale out and build a large network, even cover the whole factory. On top of that, of course, um, I think you saw it in the slides before, we have a customer-friendly UI because that's something everybody wants. Everybody wants to administer and operate a network in a very easy and efficient way. I talk about application-centric network, and one thing that was already mentioned is the network exposure function and the importance of interfaces and API. And what is really our mission is getting the integration of the network of the 5G network and the application side to be more sophisticated. And that's why we built an application layer on top of our 5G core network control software. And what we want to achieve is actually have a large API that is responsive and makes a responsive 5G network for the factory floor. We already saw the importance of the various different applications and how to connect OT and IT. Also, we want to help the integration of devices, of robots, of um, AGVs, of the management of edge computing. And for that, we will need those interfaces. And of course, what's important, um, providing data on demand that's coming from the network. This is something that's going on in the development. Um, we are a young company, yet we do have some references and we do have uh, integrated uh, already some projects because just having the blank theory doesn't work. We need to test this. We need to test our assumption. Also, we need to test our technology. Um, the first thing we did was still when we were researchers at the university. This is something really nice. Volkswagen liked that. Um, we automated an uh, automated guided robot. Uh, in, the actu in the actual production line of Volkswagen. What's cool in the project is that we use edge computing to control the robot. So we estimated, uh, you know, we established a very reliable wireless connecti connection link between the MAR and the 5G network and control the robot completely from the network side. Um, so you see this KUKA robot and there's actually a lot of communication computation technology inside, and we all switched it off. Um, that was a lot of work for the ones who built the application. Um, we have another network in a test bed site in Cummins. This is in the eastern part of Saxony. There's a large airfield, and this airfield is not really as tightly regulated as an airport, for example. And so they have an open real-life test bed where they test drone flights. Uh, multiple drones flying in connection to each other using our 5G networks. And they are also looking into using autonomous flight control for flight taxis or even doing quality of service maintenance use cases for airfields. The large, uh, last reference is a uh, use case that we are currently building and will be uh, will deploy this year. This is together with the Leibniz Institute for Agriculture. Um, it's a use case in the agricultural sector, um, doing potato and cucumber harvesting. Not really something fancy, but actually the agriculture industry really needs that kind of network and connectivity because imagine being in the rural area in Germany, uh, you don't have any good connection. And even uh, in the sites I've been there, they have 2G, and if you are lucky, you get LTE. So having a very sophisticated automation of machines is only possible if you have a private 5G network. Um, we have other use cases and other projects, but these are the three I wanted to present. Um, why we are going in this market? Um, this is actually a really new emerging market, and you see it at the various development steps that have been presented. Um, the first one to have the market uh, was CBRS in the USA. Um, we Germans were quite fast with 2019 opening frequency spectrum, and France and India are also having opened the spectrum this year. So we are a young company, and this is a really nice global market that emerges. Uh, we will operate in it. And I hope you liked my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Uh, um, quite interesting. And I think, I mean, agriculture is, could be also fancy or... Uh, 
a cucumber and potato doesn't yeah, sound well, too fancy, yeah, but the, the, the technology behind it is really yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 I see. Um, Gibt es Fragen? Are there any questions? Uh, so you um, mentioned the Volkswagen uh, project. Uh, are there any, um, do you see also opportunities uh, for your technology uh, in, in the mid-sized manufacturing, for mid-sized manufacturing companies? So the 5G core is a software component and yeah. it basically scales from any size. What we are looking also into is very, very small deployments for handcraft, for example, because uh, they have the problem of finding skilled labor at the moment and they are replacing the not available workers with robots so they can keep on the production. Yeah. And for that you can use a femtosized 5G network with a 5G core. Okay. It's custom to that. Yeah. Okay. So that, that easy to use approach is something that's really, um, yeah, could, uh, th could, th could support all the, th that's yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, of course, they have different requirements in the how to use it than yeah. it would a Volkswagen, for example. A Volkswagen yeah, was sure. much more sophisticated control over the network. Okay. But they just want plug and play and uh, it should run. Okay, cool. So, yeah, thank you again.